Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And today I'm bringing you just a really fun, quick and easy video. I'm gonna show you guys how to make those little custom letter keychains that I showed in my last video with the Pink Gypsy Leopard Tumblr. And when I asked you guys if you wanted to see a tutorial on those, I got a huge response. So I'm really happy to bring this video to you guys this week. I hope you enjoy it. And just a heads up, we're not going to release a video on Saturday after Christmas just because I want to spend a lot of time with my family this week. So we are going to skip that video on Saturday and I definitely will be back on the 30th on Wednesday with a new video. So stay tuned for that. Merry Christmas to you all. That's enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're gonna start with 20 milliliters of epoxy resin. I already have it mixed up here, and I'm using DIY Epoxy's Artisan Formula. It's one of my favorite epoxies to use for pouring molds. I'll have a link down below as well as a discount code if you guys wanna try it out. So I'm just gonna divvy it up into these extra medicine cups, two of which will be my glitter and one of which I'm gonna keep clear. And obviously the one that I'm gonna keep clear, I'm, I just need a tiny bit of it because I'm just gonna use the clear to line the bottom of my mold before I put in my chunky shiny opal pieces, which I'll show you here in a bit. I'm gonna use my stainless steel coffee stir stick to spread out the resin and make sure I have the whole bottom part of my mold covered. The mold that I'm using today is from Amazon, and if you want to get the same one, you can find a link for this down below in the description box. After I got all the epoxy in there, I'm going to hit it real quick with my torch, but not too much because this particular mold cannot take too much heat. After that, I'm going to cut up some of these like confetti glitter pieces. This is basically like large shards of opal holographic mylar I think it's called and I'm just cutting it up a little bit because these large chunks can't really fit into such a small mold so we're just going to snip them up and make them smaller if you want to throw these in a coffee grinder or whatever you can probably do that too I just think it's easy to snip them up in my little cup here so once I've got these cut up I'm ready to throw them into the bottom of my mold this is obviously totally optional. I just think it adds like a really pretty detail and dimension to my piece. So I'm literally just sprinkling a very, very small amount of these shards. And then I'm gonna use my stir stick again to make sure that they're all pushed down towards the bottom and that I don't have any sticking up along the sides. And while that's sitting, I'm going to mix my glitter into my remaining medicine cups of epoxy. I'm gonna put Cool Mom into one. Cool Mom is a really pretty hot pink from Peachy Olive Glitters. And we're just adding enough to cover the top of our epoxy in the medicine cup here. And then we're going to thoroughly stir that in to make sure that all the glitter is evenly distributed into the epoxy. This other color that I'm using is called Celebrate. It's a super sparkly like opal pink that I just love and I think it goes so well with this hot pink. Okay, and then after we've got the glitter all mixed in there, I'm going to let my epoxy sit for just a couple minutes, and then I'm going to hit the top of those with my torch just lightly for a second to pop any bubbles that might have risen to the top while we were letting that epoxy rest. Letting the epoxy rest will ensure that the glitter stays suspended in the epoxy after we pour it in the mold and that it won't all just sit to the bottom of the mold. I'm going to pour my first color in towards the top there and then my second color in towards the bottom because what I want to create is kind of a fade between the two colors somewhere in the center of my mold. And so I just pour a little bit of both, one at the top, one at the bottom, and then I kind of add some more in until my mold is filled up to the top. You definitely want to make sure that your mold isn't overflowing, but you also want to make sure that it isn't not too full <laughs> like it isn't full enough okay so we're just going to carefully keep adding in more with our stir stick until we're sure that we've reached just the top 
Once I've got my mold filled, I'm gonna kind of slap the mold against my desk a little bit just to help the bubbles rise to the top. And then I'm gonna spritz my mold with a little 91% rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle. Just one spray will do. And then I'm gonna wait about mm, 30 seconds or so for some of that alcohol to evaporate. And then I'm going to hit the mold with my torch really quickly. You could also use a barbecue lighter for this. Probably safer than using a large tor torch, especially on these cheaper molds, because again, these cheaper molds really aren't made to take heat like this. But I also wanna make sure that I really get all the bubbles out. All right, so now I'm gonna place my mold in a safe place for it to dry. I like to make sure that I'm placing my mold on a totally level surface that's safe from any kind of debris and dust falling onto it. And I'm gonna let it sit for about 12 hours. And once it's sat for 12 hours, I'm going to dome the back of my piece. I have some epoxy here that I'm using for another project and I'm just using a tiny bit of it with uh, this like silicone brush and I'm applying a very small amount along the back of my piece just to make sure that the back is just as smooth as the front is because sometimes this back has a tendency to be like hollow looking or like curved in the back or sharp and we don't want to do that we just want to round the piece out nicely so you're just going to very carefully brush a small amount of epoxy along the back making sure that it's evenly spread out along the full surface of your piece once i've got that on there i'm going to let my piece sit for like a full 18 to 24 hours before we take it out of the mold Okay, so this is definitely my favorite part. My pieces have been sitting for about 24 hours and they're ready to be removed and it is so satisfying. They should come right out and once we've got our pieces out of the mold, I just like to inspect the sides really quick and get them cleaned up with a craft knife if necessary. Sometimes there's some sharp bits and stuff sticking out from like the corner edge on the back and I just run my craft knife along there really carefully to remove any kind of weird bits from the sides. And once we've got those all cleaned up, I'm ready to install the eyelet screw that's going to go in the top center of my piece. Make sure you don't use the eyelet screws that come with your mold. The reason why is the ones that come with this particular mold from Amazon are really flimsy and they always snap off inside my mold when I'm trying to drive them in. The ones I'm using today are definitely more substantial and a thicker gauge. I got them from Hobby Lobby. I will try to find some similar ones on Amazon and link those below, but I really, really like these ones that I found at Hobby Lobby in the jewelry section. And the way that I like to drive these in is I take my dental pick tool and my torch and I get my dental pick tool super, super hot. Then I take the pokey part that's really hot <laughs> and I drive a hole through the top middle part here. Make sure you make your hole nice and straight and poke it in as far as you can get it to go. Then I'm going to take my eyelet screw with my hands and I'm going to gently screw it in about as far as I can get it to go with my hands. There's special tools that you could use for this like a hand drill and things. I didn't want to have to buy extra stuff so I just used what I had on hand here and this actually works really well for me. When you're driving in your eyelet screw, you want to really try to use your pliers to drive that in at the base of the eyelet screw and not turn the top because it's really easy to turn the top too much and it'll snap off from the actual screw part, if that makes sense. So that top round part will snap off if you turn it too much aside from the base of the eyelet screw. I really hope that makes sense. So you're just going to screw that down till that top eyelet is sitting flush with your piece like that. 
and then we're going to attach it to our keychain hardware. I really like this keychain hardware. I get it from Amazon. I'll have a link for it down below. And we're just going to use one of the jump rings that it comes with. These jump rings are already open, so they're really easy to use. We're just going to close that jump ring by reattaching the ends side by side. Once that's all done, I'm going to attach this pink fluffy thing that I got from AliExpress. I'll try to find these same kind of little fluffy accessories on Amazon. I got these, like I said, from AliExpress and they took like four months to get here from China, but they are super cute. <laughs> so I'm just going to attach these with an extra jump ring that I have in my jump ring kit and we're done. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I absolutely love these keychains. They make such a cute last minute gift idea or just a fun addition to your custom tumblers, whatever you want to use them for. I'm just obsessed. So I hope you guys love this. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again real soon. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.